guys! Okay, so, sorry for the bag lady chic, but as I'm filming this, it is Sunday, and Sundays are known for two things. One, no post. Two, no pants. So you're like, yeah, this. So, <laughs> this video is basically going to be um, my response to your guys' response. Um, basically furthering dis the discussion um, about Captain America, because that's what these responses were about. And I just wanted to say, these were some awesome responses. Um, a couple were a little short, though. Um, I do want to have um, the responses be roughly 400 words, because I think that's enough, um, enough to make your argument and support it just a little bit. Um, basically, think of this like thesis practice, um, thesis statement practice, um, because as you get into college and stuff, you'll learn that you need to practice thesis statements so much um, because it'll really help you. Because um, college is all about writing papers. <laughs> it sucks, but a thesis statement is the staple of a uh, good paper, other than the staples. You know, that kind of keep it together. <laughs> um, but yeah, so basically think of this as practice. Um, to make your argument um, in a good amount of space um, and to support it um, just enough to um, make me want to read on, basically. Um, so yeah. So I'll start talking about how awesome these were. They were amazing. You guys really went above and beyond in um, kind of bringing ideas to the table um, about what um, the response was. So the original response question was the importance of Steve Rogers, aka Captain America, being the first superhero in the Marvel Universe. Um, and a couple of you brought in the relation to the actual world, like to um, World War II era um, America and post-World War II, um, all that, which was absolutely amazing. One of you guys even made the connection that, um, the comics, uh, made war, um, understandable for children. Um, yes, comics are, um, not accurate depictions of war and warfare, but it is enough so that it can help, um, start explaining these occurrences to children, um, which I really like. That was a really good point. Um, something that I certainly hadn't thought about. Um, you guys also talked about how um, Captain America kind of was the personification of America and the American ideal, which is absolutely true. And um, uh, one of you uh, even mentioned um, that, like, Captain America set the bar for all the other heroes, which is very, very, very important when we start talking about Tony Stark tomorrow <laughs> um, because of Howard Stark's involvement with Captain America and the search for Captain America. Um, that plays a big part in Tony's story and the formation of his character. Um, also, a point that one of you brought up was um, you, you paralleled the um, breaking of the shield of Captain America to the um, kind of breaking of Steve Rogers um, post um, his time on ice. And it, it really like stuck with me. I liked that a lot. Um, of course, from that, I kind of started thinking about um, the style of Japanese pottery that whenever um, a pot breaks uh, you reform it using like gold enamel and so uh, basically the idea is that um, a piece has become more beautiful as it's been broken um, but I thought about that in the sense of Captain America and his shield and how the scar is actually visible in the shield um, because of the breaking of Steve Rogers and all that stuff. So it's really awesome. Um, 
You guys also brought up the fact that um, Steve, uh, well, actually Captain America, became this um, almost impossible ideal of a man, of a superhero, that no one could really live up to, but everybody was trying to um, live to a standard that would be pleasing to Captain America, and how that could actually be a little bit difficult for a guy like Steve, who once he comes back, he has to um, assuage his guilt along with um, this impossible ideal of himself that the world has created, and he has to kind of marry his personality with the uh, personality of this figure that was created from him. Um, and so, yeah. I really liked your guys' responses. You guys did an amazing job. And I so look forward to having more discussions like this um, where we can talk about all these superheroes. And so, yeah. Okay, so what I also want to do with these weekly videos where we talk about the responses is actually to um, kind of recap the week. Um, and basically make it like this week in the world of Marvel, um, where I kind of keep you guys up to date on the film stuff that's going on in case you guys aren't following it. Um, but, so, I don't know if you guys have been seeing it or not, but the S.H.I.E.L.D. show is actually starting to film, which is super duper exciting. Um, the cast and crew have been posting pictures. Um, I don't know if you guys saw the twit pic of the shield truck, um, where it was basically the Jeep, uh, where it had, like, the shield logo on the side, and oh my gosh, I about died squealing. <laughs> um, and then, of course, Clark Gregg's tweet a couple weeks back, where he was saying, um, so good to be back in this suit again, I'm, oh, hashtag shield, I'm just like, yes! <laughs> um, and in case you guys didn't realize it, Coulson does, in fact, live! Um, I'm assuming, I'm working on the fact that you guys have all watched The Avengers, um, seeing as, as you are taking this class and you wanted to learn more, um, so, <laughs> you all know what happens in The Avengers, but, no need to worry because he's back, and he's better than ever, and he's gonna be on The Shield Show, and actually, it was confirmed that Colby Smulders, aka Maria Hill, badass extraordinaire is going to be making a couple of cameos um unfortunately she can't be a regular because of her commitment to how i met your mother because if you guys didn't know it she's robin Chabotsky. Ah! um so yeah um she's not going to be able to be a regular of course um think because of how i met your mother but she will be on the show and so that's always going to be awesome um so yeah, I'm really excited about that. Um, I'm not as in, as prepared this week as I would, will be next week or so um, with this this week in the world of Marvel. Um, but good news is, um, in the Phase Two uh, movies and stuff, uh, we should be getting another trailer, the final trailer, sometime soon for Iron Man Three, which comes out in May, which is awesome because the Mandarin is going to be the big bad in that movie, and oh, we're going to talk about him tomorrow, and oh my gosh, guys, <laughs> this is going to be an amazing movie. Um, I'll also be sure to bring up the extremist plotline, which is very important for this movie as well. So, I can't wait to talk about it with you guys tomorrow. Um, I will see you next week for This Week in the World of Marvel and your Iron Man responses, which will be awesome. Okay, so, so long.